Okay, Bruno and I, this is Bruno the Wonder Dog, Bruno. And uh, we're here to take, we're going to talk today about coconut oil and weight loss. Since uh, a, lot of, a lot of these websites and a lot of articles on the web, they tell you that coconut has properties that will stimulate fat loss and help control appetite. And, we, and uh, Bruno and I are going to look at the research. We're going to, that's right, Bruno, we're going to talk about the research. What do you think, Bruno? What do you think? Do you like coconut oil? Or do you like just plain chicken? <laughs> okay, well, all right. Hold on a second. Okay. So let's talk about whether coconut oil really helps weight loss. Now, it's thought to help uh, aid weight loss because it helps to decrease hunger and because it contains medium-chain triglycerides. Uh, I've talked about medium-chain triglycerides in previous videos. Medium-chain triglycerides are uh, sometimes called the fatless fat. Because uh, even though they're a, 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 f a form of fat, they're absorbed uh, very rapidly. They don't go through the lymphatic system like most uh, fats, uh, I'm sorry, dietary fats do. So they're, they're a fat that acts more like a carbohydrate. They're rapidly burned. Uh, medium chain triglycerides were really big in bodybuilding in the, uh, let's say, the early 80s. Then they kind of died out. You know, the, the, they weren't as popular after a while. A lot of it had to do with. They can cause a lot of uh, medium chain triglycerides can uh, cause stomach irritation, tremendous stomach stomach irritation. If you take too much and you're not used to it, it happened to me. Uh, I was sent uh, medium train uh, medium MCTs, an MCT supplement. I was sent to uh, uh, by a uh, uh, an acquaintance. Uh, he didn't give me any instructions on how much to use. So I started out with, if I remember reg uh, correctly, I took about three tablespoons. I got the worst stomach ache I've ever had in my life. It was the mother of all stomach aches, and I learned the lesson. Uh, but uh, anyway, medium chain triglycerides, they've recently come back into popularity to a certain extent uh, for, for various reasons, which I'll discuss a little later. But the thing to know about medium chain triglycerides is that they metabolize differently than long chain triglycerides. Long chain triglycerides, or LCTs, are fats that are, let's say, longer chains. So for example, polyunsaturated fats, fish oil, vegetable oils, these are all long chain uh, fatty acids, uh, and they do take a, a, a lot longer to digest. They have to go through a different digestive process compared to medium chain triglycerides. Uh, olive oil is also a long chain triglyceride. Nut butters, uh, and uh, specific medium chain triglyceride uh, fatty acids include capric, caprylic, and caproic, and lauric acid. Now, the last one, lauric acid, there's some controversy about it because it's not quite absorbed in the same way as the other, uh, the other uh, medium-chain triglycerides. But lauric acid does provide some pretty good antibacterial and antifungal effects in the body. Uh, unlike long-chain triglycerides, 95% of medium-chain triglycerides are rapidly and directly absorbed into the bloodstream, specifically the portal vein of the liver, and it's used for immediate fuel, as I said earlier. Medium-chain triglycerides are also less likely than long-chain triglycerides to be stored as fat. In other words, medium-chain triglycerides are almost never stored as fat unless you uh, eat a, a, you know, overeat calories, take in more calories than you burn. Because medium chain triglycerides do contain, uh, they contain about nine grams, uh, if I remember correctly, nine calories per gram, uh, as is the same with other fats. But again, the nature of their structure, of the structure of medium chain triglycerides, is such that they are unlikely to be stored as fat, rather, they'll be burned as energy pretty fast. Although medium chain triglycerides naturally comprise about 50% of the fat in coconut oil, they can also be isolated and made into a standalone product like the one I was sent years ago. But most medium chain triglycerides standalone supplements are derived from coconut oil. Uh, but, but on the other hand, you have to keep in mind, co this is an important point, coconut oil, coconut oil and medium chain triglyceride are not the same thing. They're not synonymous. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to take a uh, medium chain triglyceride supplement. I'm going to take coconut oil. No, you're not taking. Even though coconut oil does contain medium tri chain triglycerides or MCTs, it, coconut oil and MCT are not the same supplement. For example, coconut oil consists of 47.5% lauric acid and less, and less than 8% capric, caprylic, and caproic acid. 
Uh, most, uh, most authorities classify lauric acid as a medium-chain triglyceride, but it behaves more like a long-chain triglyceride in terms of absorption and metabolism. In other words, only 25 to 30 percent of lauric acid is absorbed through the portal vein, compared with 95 percent of the other uh, MCT. So, in other words, lauric acid is absorbed much slower than the other fa uh, medium chain uh, triglyceride fatty acids. So, it doesn't have the same effects on health. Uh, that's why the, some people think that lauric acid isn't a true medium chain triglyceride. While some studies have found that medium chain tri uh, triglycerides increase feelings of fullness and enhance weight loss. They used oils high in capric and caprylic acid and low in lauric acid, which is unlike the, the uh, composition of, of uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil has a lot of lauric acid, so it's not going to be absorbed. This is the bottom line. Coconut oil is not going to be absorbed nearly as fast as pure medium chain triglycerides. As a consequence, coconut oil is not as effective and medium chain triglyceride uh, as a, let's say, as a fuel, as an immediate fuel, and also for promoting body fat loss. Coconut oil does in may increase, however, it may increase feelings of fullness and enhance appetite regulation. That's common with any type of dietary fat. Di dietary fat tends to increase satiety. Uh, when you eat a uh, food that's high in fat, you usually aren't as hungry as, let's say, eating a carbohydrate, a pure car carbohydrate. Research has shown that adding fat-rich foods like coconut oil to meals may increase stomach volume, inducing greater sensations of fullness compared to low-fat meals. Research has also shown that eating coconut oil may, increase, may decrease inflammation, raise levels of heart-protective high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, and promote insulin sensitivity. So there's definite health benefits to ingesting coconut oil. Still, while many studies link MCT oil to weight loss, the research on coconut oil effect on weight loss is lacking. Numerous human studies have found that MCT oil consumption may promote feelings of fullness and that replacing low ch uh, long chain triglycerides with MCTs may lead to modest weight loss. It's not going to like peel the weight off. It's going to just modestly uh, promote fat loss. Most studies have not found that consuming coconut oil increases feelings of fullness. That's another difference. Medium chain triglycerides will increase feelings of fullness, whereas coconut oil will not. For example, one 2018 study of 15 obese women found that eating breakfast with 25 milliliters of coconut oil was less effective at reducing appetite four hours after the meal compared with the same amount of olive oil. So in other words, olive oil is a long chain triglyceride, more effective and reducing appetite than coconut oil. A 2017 study published in the journal Physiology and Behavior featured 42 adults and found that coconut oil was significantly less filling than an MCT oil composed of high amounts of caprylic and capric acids, but slightly more filling than vegetable oil. There was little or no evidence to show that consuming coconut oil aids body fat loss. A four-week study published in, the, in 2018 in the, in the British Medical Journal, Open Journal, looked at 91 adults and found no significant differences in body weight between groups that consume 1.8 ounces or 50 grams of either coconut oil, butter, or olive oil per day. In other words, there's no difference in uh, fat loss. On the other hand, there is some evidence that coconut oil may help to reduce belly fat. Now, this is important consideration because belly fat especially the deep-lying belly fat, known as visceral fat. Uh, you can't see that. It's deep in the belly area. This is the most dangerous body fat of all. It's what they call a labile fat in the sense that the fat, uh, is uh, 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 the visceral fat, is constantly being broken down and where it travels in that same portal system into the liver where and where that fat can be, be converted to saturated fat. It can promote fatty liver, which is uh, epidemic right now. 20 million Americans have it. It can uh, promote insulin resistance, give more di diabetes, and, you get and it can promote uh, cardiovascular disease, possibly even cancer. So uh, visceral fat is a very dangerous fat. Anything that reduces it is very good for health because it will help prevent cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and so on and so forth. Exercise, of course, is uh, very good for uh, reducing visceral fat. The good thing about visceral fat is that it's one of the first fat to go. When you start to diet and exercise, visceral fat tends to uh, decrease pretty rapidly. 
Uh, but and there is some evidence to show that coconut oil may help to reduce this belly fat or visceral fat. This was shown in a study that lasted a month and featured 20 obese adults who ingested two tablespoons of coconut oil daily, which, ex which wound up significantly reducing their waist circumference in the male participants. A few rat studies have also shown this effect, effect of coconut oil. On the other hand, a two-month study of 32 adults who adjusted two tablespoons of coconut oil a day showed no weight loss effects at all, although levels of high-density lipoprotein did increase. Now, there's one thing that's interesting about coconut oil, which has come, uh, it's kind of become popular over the internet in the last, let's say, four years or so. Uh, it started with a physician who, uh, her, her husband was uh, in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease, and uh, I'm not sure where she got the idea. She said it's in a video somewhere. But anyway, she decided to give her husband coconut oil. And uh, as a physician, she knew a little bit about the science of coconut oil. She knew that coconut oil contains medium chain triglycerides, and medium chain triglycerides are a very, very excellent substrate for the production of ketones. Ketones are byproducts of fat metabolism. metabolism. There are three of them. And the interesting thing about ketones is they can be used as an alternative fuel to glucose. Under normal conditions, glucose is the primary fuel of the human brain. However, uh, in, under certain conditions, for example, Alzheimer's, uh, the uh, brain becomes less efficient at using glucose. So what, you, what, what happens there, it's, it's like a car not getting enough fuel. The brain starts to sputter. You get memory impairment and so on and so forth when the brain cannot properly utilize glucose. Anyway, this, this physician figured out, or she got it from someone else, that ketones being an alternate fuel might be of use in the early stages of Alzheimer's. She gave it to her husband, who, I said, who as I said, was in the early stages of Alzheimer's, and it greatly improved his cognition, his thinking ability. He, he was able to, uh, his memory improved. Uh, he he uh, seemed like almost got back to normal for a while. Uh, since then, coconut oil has become r recommended for people that are showing memory impairments, possibly early uh, Alzheimer's disease. And again, the, the active ingredient coconut oil for this is medium chain triglycerides because medium chain triglycerides are, again, a, uh, a, a substrate, meaning they can, get, they can convert into ketones fairly rapidly. And the ketones, in fact, ketones are actually a better fuel for the brain than glucose itself. A lot of scientists uh, say that. Ketones are more efficiently used as energy in the brain than glucose itself. Median chain triglycerides, uh, uh, controversy about that is whether you should take them when you're on a, let's say, a ketogenic diet. Uh, of course, when you're on a ketogenic diet, which is basically very low carbohydrate, 20 grams a day or less, your body uh, starts to produce a, a greater amount of ketones after about 24 to 48 hours. The ketones can be used as fuel in the muscles, brain, and many other tissues. Uh, you know, some people say, well, you should also have medium chain triglyceride supplements in a, keto, uh, in a ketogenic diet. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard to say. I would say that in the beginning stages of a ketogenic diet, you'll let you very often encounter something called keto flu, where you feel like crap, you have no energy. That's usually caused by uh, a, a loss of electrolytes, particularly sodium. On the other hand, it might taking a medium chain triglyceride supplement or even coconut oil in the early stages, uh, let's say the early the first few days of a ketogenic diet, it could be an advantage uh, to slip, helping you, uh, you know, keep your energy up without affecting the fat loss properties of the diet, uh, and it might even help kick out extra ketones uh, that are induced by the diet itself. So that's uh, that's a couple other reasons why medium chain triglyceride could be of value. Uh, some people uh, combine medium chain triglyceride with, uh, let's say, uh, fructose or uh, dextrose as an energy uh, drink before training, let's say a pre-workout drink. Uh, you got Again, you got to be careful of medium chain triglycerides because they're extremely irritating. If you're going to try using uh, medium chain triglycerides, I would suggest starting with a very small dosage to see how you tolerate it maybe a, even a, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, then you could work up. You can work up to maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons a day of uh, medium-chain triglyceride. So that's about it. To sum up, 
Coconut oil has been suggested as a, uh, as a good supplement to help promote body fat loss. While it may help reduce some uh, visceral body fat, which is deep-lying abdominal fat, generally speaking, it's not an effective fat loss supplement. So uh, that's about it. And uh, if you want to have more information on nutrition, exercise science, hormonal ther uh, therapy, uh, women's health and fitness, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, food supplements that work and food supplements that don't work, well, all of this, ergogenic aids, all of this is in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, which is published on the first of every month. It, it averages 40 to 50 pages, solid evidence-based information uh, based on current science. It also includes my over, well, it's about 57, 58 years of constant study and experience, which, you, which nobody can really match in the entire industry. Uh, and uh, I guarantee no matter what your level of education, you will learn something from every issue of Applied Metabolics. And I could say that because I learned something in doing the research for the article. So I know that anybody's going to learn something when you read Applied Metabolics. Uh, it's great for anybody. Uh, I, you know, it's written in plain English. I've been a writer for over four decades. I know how to write. Uh, there's no medical uh, jargon like in, you see in some of these other digital newsletters or publications. Uh, everything's in plain English, easy to understand. And, and most of all, it's practical. That's why I call it Applied Metabolics. It's information you could use immediately. That, uh, there are many, many studies I come across. I don't write about them because while they're very interesting, they don't have a lot of practical value. I want to present material that can be used by people today. It's, uh, I want to be, present material that you can apply to your training, your diet, that type of thing. So, uh, uh, so again, subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where every day I post new studies, new information on nutrition, health, and general medicine and fitness. That's, uh, that's only for subscribers. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only can uh, submit short questions to me. I'll be happy to answer them. If you're a current subscriber, I don't answer unsolicited questions. However, uh, you're welcome to leave comments underneath. Uh, on the other hand, I'm laughing because Bruno will accept. Uh, he'll accept any kind of question. You so, if you want Bruno to uh, to ask, you know, to answer any of your questions, uh, he will uh, he will answer your questions. Unfortunately, it'll, it'll be canine language, so you won't be able to understand it. <laughs> but you can try anyway. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, that's about it. Oh, you could you could also leave uh, comments. Under these videos, uh, if you want to leave suggestions for future videos, I'm open to suggestions. And uh, please be kind with your comments. <laughs> I know there's always some trolls, but, you know, that's the Internet. What can you do? So I'm just going to ignore you trolls. <laughs> anyway, that's about it. If you want to have the best friend, you'll have, hey, listen, the holidays are coming up here as I'm doing this. Uh, you know, it's the, nearly the end of 2019. Uh bittersweet year for a lot of us you know I lost a lot of good friends but anyway you know maybe uh, you might you might want to think about you know getting a gift going to your local shelter and adopting a sweet loyal dog who will be the best friend you'll ever have in your life the most loyal friend you'll ever have I could speak with experience and I could tell you that you know no matter how much in love you are with somebody or whether you're married or have a girlfriend or whatever boyfriend whatever People will often just leave you, <laughs> whatever reason, you know, they'll leave you, you know, but a dog will, will remain loyal to you from the moment you get him or her to the moment that dog dies. And that I can, I can confirm that. Dogs are the most loving creatures. I will always have a dog as long as I'm on this earth because I love them. So thank you for listening. Take care.